How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian and today it's that time of the week again we are going to go through the user submitted teams for a review coming up for game week four. Now I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of the teams we had last week were absolutely just template teams and they were doing quite well for themselves but some of the ones we today are an absolute train wreck. A lot like Rangers performance and Champions League qualification last night against PSV Eindhoven where they lost 5-1 and gave away an own goal which is an absolutely tragic thing. But we're not going to get into that, that's for a different video when we have the old firm coming up on Sunday. But if you do want to stay up to date with all the best FPL content, please make sure to drop a sub down below. We'll be doing all the FPL weekly content with user submitted teams, advice for the upcoming game weeks and game week reviews. So make sure to drop a sub down below for that and if you do want to submit your team, please make sure to drop it in my Instagram inbox down below below there will also be a link for that so without any further ado let's get in to some user submitted teams all right let's have a look at this one shite the fact that you've got Rodri, Bowen, Antonio and Romero in your team and possibly Ederson means you've either already used your wild card because it's not really giving me the information on screen or you've taken a lot of points hits to get them in just because they're playing Luton a lot of the big teams are already aware that going to Luton is a place that some people will slip up and drop points. Now I'm not guaranteeing that's West Ham, I'm not guaranteeing that that's even going to be Man City or it's going to be someone mid-table like Brighton, it can't, it, we don't know yet. But Luton will get points at home, that's so much as, that is a guarantee. We don't know if it'll be now or be later on. You've just seen how West Ham have performed against Chelsea and Brighton. Fair enough, they're two good teams, except for maybe Chelsea's definitely lacking. But this is not a sustainable team for the rest of the season. This isn't the same year where Leicester goes on a mad run to win the league. This is just a standard year where Man City are probably going to run away with it by Christmas. Do not be fooled that this team is not good. Advice for the team? Get rid of the players that are... We have no data to prove that they will not be good long term. Like the three or the three or four that you brought in fair enough Isaac he might get you points I can't say yes or no to that Matoma, Saka, Chilwell, Estepunyan and Haaland are all pretty much sta like staple in your teams right now Estepunyan you can make an argument for he's maybe fallen off in the recent weeks but the rest of them are the other ones you got, they're not even diversibles. They're just absolute mints in terms of getting you points. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh on Jared Bowen because a couple of years ago when West Ham did get into the Conference League or Europa League, I can't remember where they finished, he was their main man for that. Antonio wasn't, and you've got him captain against Luton just because he's a striker playing a home game. Like They could easily win tomorrow, West Ham, I'm not saying that. But you're underestimating Luton at home and they are going to get points because everyone's known about their stadium, about how you've got to go through the back gardens. I don't think this scene, this team is sustainable and I do think you're going to drop points at some point in the next couple of weeks if you maintain this. But best of luck because I think you're a numpty. Moving into team two here, you've just a slightly bit better than team one. Three Man City assets with Pep Roulette. Good luck to you. Yeah, they're playing Fulham at home. They should win that realistically and all three of them could play. The chances are one won't. You've got Dooku who's definitely looking like he'd get in the game and he's going to be subbing on for somebody in the attacking lineup. We can really just bank on that Haaland will be in that team, that's fair enough. You've brought in Sterling because very little people had him last week and if he did fair play, playing not, um, Nottingham Forest, he might get you points but you're now just jumped on the bandwagon too late. I swear over a million people have brought in Sterling this week just because he had one good game week. It's not worth the transfer. You need to make sensible transfers if you're going to win this. Diaby, if you've had him from the start, fair play. He's been looking pretty sick. Um, he is one of the people I'm considering bringing into mine. Matty Cash, you definitely did not have him in your team. You have either used a wild card or you... Oh, I'm actually looking at the top here. You've used your free hit, which if it is this week, fair enough. And you've used your triple captain in game week one. This is, this is an abysmal team that is not sustainable. Dinier, Matty Cash and Jack or Rico Henry. You've got Romero on the bench just because he's had a couple of clean sheets and he scored a goal. Richarlison we know is absolutely shite. The fact you've got Salah on the bench where you could just take out Rico Henry uh, and play him instead because yeah, Bournemouth do look like they may, they're, they're due a goal or due a result because that's Samelio. 
can't go on a sub butcher his name and i apologize he does look like he's going to get on the score sheet soon and brentford easily could be that team they fall to but just take out denny you're you're really underestimating the fact that aston villa will score um, you've got your bench boost still to play if you're going to play it you may as well just go all out now because you're not going to be in the running by October which is in a month's time you've not been paying attention Sanchez, fine uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about him not for me, don't see it realistically long term you've not got Haaland captain even though he's playing Fulham at home that's just silly You should. You, hope's lost for you pal hope is lost for you but good luck. Moving into team three. Now this is what we're talking about. This is a far better team that is definitely going to go a lot further along the difference. And I can now see your man there is a Semenio. So apologies from team two when I couldn't even mind his name. This team definitely seems a lot stronger. Uh, the fact you've got Nicholas Jackson, who I still really haven't seen much from. I know he got his goal last week. I was wrong. He got it off. Fair play. I just don't see it long term. The fact that was, like, I had to go and look this up. That he was at Villarreal and he got 11 goals in 30 games and arguably a much easier league than the Premier League to get goals. Um, I still need to see much before I'm convinced, but a lot of people have him, a lot of people are banking on him. He had a good game, fair enough. The same is probably the reason why you have Sterling, you maybe saved up your transfers, but one thing you forgot about is the fact that it's transfer deadline day tomorrow with an international break. Sterling could go and get injured against Scotland. Do you think big Jack Henry's gonna take his nonsense? Absolutely not, he'll floor him. Uh, looking at this team, it is all right though to be to give you credit. The fact you've got Son in there, he does look like he is due a couple of goals and a good points. Udogi, he did take a bit of a knock last week, but I hear it's nothing. There's a good chance he'll be starting again this weekend. Chilwell, as we know, playing left wing. Gavardiol looks pretty solid for points, and he's definitely like like us eighty percent chance of starting for Man City. But you never know. Akanji could have got rid of his flu, and he's now back. And then Bardiol could be sitting there. That's the problem with Pep Roulette. Haaland captain, pretty bog standard. I wouldn't complain with that. Your bench is pretty strong there. Estepinian, Rico Henry, and Semenyo. I would say that's your probably best starting eleven coming up for this team week as well. Yeah, solid team. Anything changing? Well, the fact that you've kept all your chips. I'm proud of you for that. You haven't jumped on with everyone else thinking, oh no, I'm the f I'm in the top 400, I need to remain there and then waste it all and then you're out by Christmas. So not much point there. Fair play for the rest of the team. Trying to put Anana on the bench, that's fine because Arsenal more than likely will score, arguably. I hope, if you've got my signed Arsenal jersey behind me. Happy enough for the team. Really depends on what you plan on going forward, uh, how much you have in the bank. You've not submitted any of that. Fair enough, strong team. I'll give you that. I'll give you a 7 out of 10. I know I've not been doing ratings, but let's do that one. Good 7 out of 10. I've had to adjust my screen for this one because apparently you've taken a screenshot on an iPad instead of uh, a phone like everyone else where we've got the same aspect ratio. But looking at this team, you've definitely brought in Darwin because he smashed it last week and got two goals. No complaints there. I would bring them the same. Chilwell, Gusto and Sterling. You're really just banking on this as well. This is, you're following the crowd, a bunch of sheep, not really doing the right thing in my opinion. You need to be looking at your diversibles to make sure they've got the right game weeks. Nottingham Forest at home, that is probably one you'd want to target. I don't really see Gusto going to be in the team, uh, being in your team that much longer because uh, Rhys James is going to be coming back in two game weeks apparently. Um, so he'll be back to the bench and be getting you no know, points. Udogi, absolutely brilliant. Brian and Buemo, absolutely fantastic shout. Kieran Trippi, like the fact you've got on him early, that's going to be a good shout. Anderson, he's overperforming right now. I can see him falling off and the fact that Wolves are definitely due uh, to get some points on the board because they're not they're they're underperforming in my eyes. Um, I know they've had a lot of discipline this week with your man that's away in Man City, Nunez. Um, I don't think he's going to be starting many games for Man City either. You've got Iwanyene on the furthest part of your bench, which definitely scares me because if you've not been paying attention, he is now about to go eight games in a row where he has scored in every single game. He's the third African player ever to do that. I think Mane is one of them. Salah maybe 
I can't remember what year I saw a thing pop up on Instagram I'm just re-quoting that I didn't even know that was a fact but I've had him in my team since game week two because he's definitely a consistent goal scorer and getting ahead of the curve on him is a pretty important thing Vicario on goal I quite like that not many people have got him he's kept what two clean sheets in a row now good shout with him uh, happy enough with that Saka um, he's got a tough game week coming up but one thing you're really lacking here is no Man United assets yeah, they got off the mark after having a couple of struggling game weeks, but realistically, you still want to probably be holding on to Bruno Fernandez. That's where I'm thinking you should maybe be spending some of your sterling money. You can maybe downgrade Madison. I, I personally think it was a big toss-up between a lot of people. For me, a lot of people try to bring in Sterling and Madison. That's the main talking point this week about who's the one to bring in. I would have sided on the side of Sterling slightly more just based on the fixtures for the couple of weeks. But if I want to do it long term, I'm going to say Madison because I expect Ange Ball to do a lot better than Spurs um, have been performing in recent years. And I don't really see it with Chelsea. They have just keep seems to buy in players. They've not really got anything gelling going. You might get a couple of points in this game. Maybe you'll end up selling them assets down the line when you might want to be banking stuff and making more long term investments with your players. So that's not really the best thing I would recommend for going Madison. It, fine it's not the end of the world and um, having Trippier in is going to be good the only difficult thing is Champions League now is he's definitely going to be starting with that Newcastle have got to focus on that because it's a fantastic achievement for them getting in next year is going to be a bit difficult for them especially with the likes of Liverpool coming back to the grade that they should be at Chelsea nah they're pish um, Spurs I can definitely see creeping into that Brighton, Aston Villa as well. There's a lot of competition for those spots, um, but fair enough with what you've got so far. Like uh, this team's definitely one of the better ones I've seen, apart from the fact that you've got too many Chelsea assets that aren't really in the right positions. Because as we can tell from the first three game weeks, Chelsea are pretty bad at conceding at the back, and um, they've definitely got a mistake in them. Yeah, they've kept one clean sheet against Luton away, which is an easy, easy uh, result for them. But fair enough, Darwin, if he he does need to be proven it one more week for me, I, there's a 100% chance he'll start this game week because of how good he was against Newcastle. And I don't think that's the wrong choice at all. But I would be putting a one uni in that team because the fact that he's going for a new record of being ninth, uh, nine games in a row, he's definitely going to be up for a goal. And if there's going to be any sort of penalty, he will be on them. So I'd maybe be switching him in. Looking at this team again, it's the exact same as I said earlier on to, but I think it was team one or two. You just literally went for teams that players that are on form, not looked at the data. You, you, oh my God, you've actually used your bench boost, free hit and triple captain. Well done, congrats. You've made the top 10 million out of 9 million with a team like this choice. Uh, well done to you. Um, this is an absolute travesty. The only positive thing I can see in your team is you actually have in Buemo, Saka and Haaland are definitely staples as well as Chilwell and Estepunyan. Udogi's not really much of a staple. He's sort of been brought in late, but he easily could be based on his price. Yeah, you're a full mate, full of a took. And we have some sensible people now coming through. We have Vardial, Estepunyan and Chilwell, absolutely fantastic choices. Um, your midfield, you've got your two Man United assets with Saka, Madison and Sterling. Haaland and Nicholas Jackson up front. Very template team there. The only thing I would maybe suggest is you put Turner on instead of Onana based on the fact that Turner seems to be consistently getting a lot more save points. Um, Onana definitely have not been getting that because of the amount of shots that he's going to be receiving. Turner's definitely been getting them, which has always put them this easier, better to get three than two. So I would that be the only really recommendation you have for that. Um, depending if you have a transfer or not, um, Muamba for Archer is probably the best one you can do. That's what I done this week in the very end of it, and um, just so I could have more money in the bank for when actually transfer deadline days finished and international breaks finished, and we can make more logical decisions. This team seems fine. Definitely the best team of the day so far. I'll give you a nine out of 10. The only reason for what you've got in front of you, you would get a 10 is the fact you've kept all your chips because you have some IQ points over the age of, let's say a four year old and you've got a Nana on the pitch. No, nothing wrong with having a Nana, just this weekend away to Arsenal, we're probably gonna score. That'd be the only change I'd make for your team, but good job. This one's definitely the best one so far.
And this is the team I'm going to be going with this weekend. I am going to be banking my Man United and Arsenal assets, so I will be sweating it after the Old Firm on Sunday with five players all at the same time. Um, as much as it really sickens me, I have to stick with Prickford who cannot keep a clean sheet to save his life. Um, I do think that he's got a better chance of keeping a clean sheet against Sheffield United than uh, Nottingham Forest do against Chelsea. Although, just to spite the amount of Chelsea fans out there, I'd nearly be tempted to put Turner in because if that game's a nil-nil, I'd be absolutely buzzing with that. Um, just for the amount of people bringing in Sterling and Jackson. Might be worth the gamble, actually. The more I'm talking about it, the more I'm thinking about it. It could be a good idea. Um, I am going to go with Haaland captain at home to Fulham. Makes more sense. And Brian and Blemo at home to Bournemouth. Because if there's anything that's going to happen, he's the one that's going to be on the penalties. Uh, I'm sticking with Saliba, even though I was tempted to put Kaburi in there or Baldock. Um, but I didn't want to double up on um, that one game with Everton because if that ends up being a high scoring game either way I would maybe lose my mind with the amount of points I've lost Estepunyan against Newcastle I expect him to concede but my hope is that he might get an assist in that game um, Chilwell is pretty standard because if there's attacking threat we'd go with that um, Archer I have put up as my first choice um, sub um, because I do expect him to maybe get some game time now that he's made the move to Sheffield United and I'm going to be keeping my boy a one you because he is going to break the record um, I think these are all logical decisions based on the data provided with how uh, much form these players are in where they've been going for um, and what like the sort of attacking presence and points per minute which is something that a lot of the experts don't talk about and um, these players are definitely in that sort of area of when they actually get points i would be very very stunned if the man united arsenal game ended nil nil and um, just based on their history there's been like both teams that have won in the last year have scored three goals though even in pre-season there was two goals so i'm expecting goals in this game but if it was a monday night fixture which has always got a bad rep of always being nil nil i'd maybe be going a bit different but today i'm sort of feeling that this is the best team to go for with uh, everything that's coming up and i'm kind of happy with it like I, i'm the most important thing i was making my decisions this week was to make sure that i kept two transfers until after the international break so i can make logical decisions based on more sets of data with who's coming in fixtures coming up seeing who's in champions league groups as well that's something that's it's not really talked about much but it's wise to have these the, the data behind you to make the decisions some people call me the spreadsheet guru and i play fantasy just because it really annoys them because i sit there and i analyze all the data but it's worthwhile because i can make decisions based on facts more than feeling although bringing in a one you know, was a gut feeling uh, when in game week two but i'm kind of proud of that but so far i'm happy enough with this so that's going to be it for today's video guys if you did enjoy it please make sure to drop a sub down below drop a like on the video and if you want to submit your teams for next week drop a <clears throat> so that's going to be it for today's video guys if you did enjoy it please make sure to drop a like down below drop a sub to the channel and make sure to submit your teams for next week's team review i'm going to be doing a watch along for the scotland england game in the upcoming weeks as well as scotland cyprus as well because I've got to be so proud of my boys. I cannot wait for the Euros in Germany. And a lot of you teams are still on the struggle point. Scotland are one of the favourites to go through. I'll see you guys on Monday after the Game Week reviews. And I will try and have a look at your teams as well. And get that all done for you for next Thursday. Thanks very much for tuning in. I will see you then. Goodbye.